Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to Best and Worst Rare Plants for Beginners. Now then. So I often get asked nearly all the time, if I'm honest, what are some easy rare plants or what are some good plants for beginners? And I know I have done a series on easy rare plants in the past. I know that. But that was very, very informational overload kind of thing. And it's not that I won't do more videos like that. It's just, I'm not so sure that we need the informational overload with some of these recommendations. Not only that, but a lot of the plants that I've picked for being say best or worst for a beginner they're based on like totally different reasons like one of them could simply just be the price so with that said i wanted to keep these videos a little bit more fluid so i can just speak a little bit more freely about these plants instead of having like a rating out of five for everything and do it that way now if you are looking for some really good easy rare plants i will link all of the videos i have on that down below if you haven't seen them they really go into a lot more details such as humidity tolerance tolerance of underwater things like that. Really, really interesting info. So if you want to watch any of those, I will leave the links to those down below. I'm going to do a few of these videos and I'm going to break it up into different types of plants. That's probably the best way I'm going to go about it. And of course, the first episode is on philodendron because it happens to be one of my favorite types of plants. So this episode is all about philodendron. Okay, disclaimer time. Who doesn't love a disclaimer time? Okay, so everything in this video I talk about, I'm talking about it from my personal experience or my opinion or things I tend to hear, that kind of an arena. I am not a professional plant person, I wouldn't say. All I will say is I own a rare plant shop and I have round about maybe 4,000, probably more by now, 4,000 plants in here. For example, I might have 30 of one plant at one time. I have a lot, so I can really get a good feel for what is easy and what is difficult and why. So in that sense, I think I have some good information to give you guys. But am I a professional? Am I a botanist? No, I'm not. Also, please be aware of the fact that I'm growing these plants in a reasonably lit environment and it is very humid in here. Now, today it's a little bit hotter than it should be. Today it is 28 degrees, but it is 77% humidity. So it's very, very humid in here and it's very bright. You just can't see the brightness because it's all downstairs. So what I'm saying is my conditions may vary from yours. Finally, these plants are selected for this list based on ease of care or something similar, not affordable. So a plant could be on this list that is reasonably expensive. However, it is a sure bet in my book. So it could be something that costs loads of money, but it's probably not going to die on you. It might propagate really well, etc, etc. So be aware that it's it's got nothing to do with price. I have actually recently filmed a video on 10 cheap-ish rare houseplants, and that may or may not be up before this one. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm just going to waffle about each plant, but I do have all the plants here to show you today. I don't think I've got any missing. I think I have them all. So that's really cool. You should get to see all of the plants. For now, we'll just do best and then worst. And then in a future video, maybe I can alternate them. If you would prefer that kind of format, let me know down below. But until then, let's get started. And let's get started with my absolute favorite plant ever. It's amazing. It's a bestseller here at the shop. It is what I like to call a classic. What I mean by that is it's always going to sell well. It's always going to be a favorite of people because it has whole marks of just everything you want, I guess, in a rare plant. This here is Philodendron Gloriosum. Yes, it's amazing. So I have a dangly leaf here that is the original leaf, and then I propped it so it's growing. So this is the original leaf. Then I have this leaf growing in, and then I have this beautiful boy that's grown here. So that is him. That's what he looks like. So Philodendron Gloriosum are what we call creepers or crawlers. They will kind of grow along a flat surface like this. You can't put them on a pole, for example. They will not climb up. They have to be grown a little bit differently. If this plant was to continue growing, it would eventually fall off the pot and you could either put it in a bigger pot or you need to essentially propagate it. Now, why is it on this list of being great for beginners? It's great for beginners because I think it will hold your attention an awful lot. They're incredibly beautiful. They're incredibly photogenic. Can you tell? That looks absolutely incredible and they're very very easy they really are now i would say that 
a lot of crawlers are very easy and I can't remember if I put more on this list. There's one other crawler in this list for being easy. I did have another one but I took it out because I thought it was crawler overload. But they are very, very easy. They grow really, really beautiful. They're quite humidity tolerant. They would obviously prefer more and if you want to propagate them, you should probably give them more. But they're really, really beautiful plants. I can't remember how much they were. I haven't necessarily done that kind of research for this video. As I say, this video isn't based on affordability but it's kind of based on ease and sexiness. Yeah, so these can be propagated and they don't fail often in my experience. Again, it's my conditions, but I really think it's worth it. And honestly, if you're a beginner and you, you want something just hot, then this is it. This really is it. Most people know this is probably my favorite Hartley philodendron. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that. It really is. It's beautiful. Have a nice look. Look at that. Honestly, honestly, absolutely stunning. Now, there are different forms of Gloriosum. I'm not fully clued up on all of them yet, but I know there is like a round form, there is a dark form. This does tend to look pretty dark, but I don't think it is. There's a form with prominent white veins. It's probably definitely that form because you can get a lot of Gloriosum that don't have these veins very prominent at all. I'm pretty sure regular form doesn't really have veins like that. I don't think it's environmental. I think it's a different plant. And I know this because of the amount I have downstairs and they do all tend to look very different. So I know that from that, but you can get different forms, but I believe the sexiest in my opinion would either be dark form or this one. I'm just gonna call it white vein because I think a lot of people do. Again, that's the other leaf right there. Incredibly beautiful plant and I really recommend them because they're just easy. They just, they're so chill. They don't give you any issues. Okay, the next plant that I recommend for beginners, I'm recommending because one, the care is very easy. I haven't had any problems and it's, kind of different. It's, it's Marmite. Don't get me wrong, it's Marmite. I've mentioned it on the channel before and I've said that it's Marmite, but I love it. So even though this plant is like super marmite I just have to include it because it's so different and I just, oh, I love it. But this here is Philodendron, whole tonny anum, and it's a lot, right? It's a lot. I will try and move back so I can get it all in. I will sit as far back as I can. I don't know where to start, I'll be honest. This is tough to explain, but it, it's a long boy. It's what's known in the trade professionally as a long boy. Here it is. It's got these really cool winged out lobes and it's, it's long. If I put it next to my head, how on earth can I do that? Here, very, very long boy. It's possibly as long as my hair, to be quite honest. The size of the lobes do seem to vary. I'll try and like put it in front of me. Oh my God, it's a mustache. Oh, yes. Yes, boy. Absolutely. Yes, boy. So yeah, the size of the lobes vary quite a lot. Some of them are short, some of them are long. Some of that is a maturity thing, no doubt. A lot of it will also be environmental, so you may have it look slightly different. When they are juvenile, they don't quite get their pretty little lobes yet. So here, that's just a bit of long. There's no boy, it's just long. But you could argue that's the boy bit, I suppose. But when they are less uh, old, more juvenile, I cannot get my words out today. They look a little bit more like this. So again, very lobey. They just vary a lot. That's, I guess that's what I'm trying to get at, but failing to get at. They vary quite a lot throughout the plant. Now they are a climber and they climb quite prolifically. Can you see these aerials? If I move back so they, they do have some focus. This is crazy. Obviously this is ready to cut and plant because the size of these aerials are ridiculous. I wanted to include it because it's just absolutely weird and it is easy care. I know it looks like it's gonna be an absolute nightmare, but it's not, it's chill. Since I've had it, it's grown two or three nodes and obviously this is where it's at at the minute. It has got smaller. That's gonna happen with root disturbance, but I kinda like it and I really wanna see a nice big one up a pole because they're just so weird. They are a little bit Tim Burton-y. I like to say that. They're a little bit Halloween-y, a bit like, ooh. Let me know what you think. I personally think they're great and I had to throw it in as something a little bit different. Right, what else? Because I'm not doing these in any order, by the way. These aren't like the best of the best downwards. These are just all of the best, in my opinion. And oh, the next one I have to get up for because I didn't bring them over. But honestly, I'm excited about this next one because I haven't shown it on this channel since, oh my God, years. It's been two or three years or something like that. Let me just get it. I waste no time in introducing it because it's huge and I can't even hide it off frame, but this absolute stunner, if you can't already tell, this absolute stunner and my next recommendation is none other than the Philodendron McDowell. Right, let me get this right. This beautiful heart shape, because that looks incredible on camera, that looks, wow, okay, okay. This is a hybrid of I believe Gloriosum and Pastazanum. So Philodendron Gloriosum, Philodendron Pastazanum. They are, well, they're more expensive now. They used to be real cheap. I used to sell them, I think two years ago for a one leaf plant around about 65 UK pounds. 
Um, they're a lot more than that. Don't wrong, this is a big one. This is a mother, I'm keeping him here because obviously these old leaves have been shipped in, but this new pretty one in my conditions is absolutely massive. Oh my God. They're not as cheap anymore. I don't know what's happened. If you have a McDowell at home, congratulations. I think they kind of went out of fashion because everyone just started caring more about other philodendron generally, like more velvety stuff. And I just think they got lost along the way. But I really think they're great because they're easy. Now, the only downside to these plants, quite honestly, is that they grow really gangly, right? No, like really, like really, like seriously, like really gangly. I know that crawlers generally can grow gangly. They ain't got shit on this, honestly. Philodendron McDowell can just be really gangly. I don't know if you can tell when I hold it back here. I mean, this one doesn't look that bad. This is not my personal plant and I regret it actually. I might have to switch it out. I do have my own McDowell in the corner. You can't see it. I haven't told you about it yet because I just haven't had the chance, I guess. This one doesn't look so bad, but the other one looks worse. They're just really gangly plants. You often get these, the face of the leaf not facing flat and they start to bend back like that. They're just a little bit difficult to keep looking really sexy. They're not impossible and I still recommend them because they are very easy. You do get a great, beautiful heart shape if it's something else that you want that you don't often see. And I, I just think they're great. They, they prop well because to be honest, they're a crawler and I, I find crawlers quite easily personally to propagate. In a lot of instances, I find crawlers easier than climbers to propagate. I know it's mad, but I do. But yeah, just an amazing plant. If I just put this next to me. I mean, that's probably a thumbnail, isn't it? So yeah, this, this plant has been on a journey. It was a lot cheaper and now it's a lot more. I, I kind of had to do a double take when I <laughs> tried to get some of these in a few weeks ago, but they're still worth it and I think they're great. I'm not sure how many people have these. As I say, they, they were a thing and then they weren't, but I love them and I think they should come back because I think they're great. Again, a little bit gangly. Um, if you really care about gangly things, maybe go for a Gloriosum. They seem to hold their form a little bit better. Pastazanum don't, the other plant that this is a hybrid with. I find that Pastazanum can get a little bit gangly as well. And I think that's when where these guys get it from. So if you don't want any gangle, go for Gloriosum. If you like the gangle, then go for these. Or you could technically go for Pastazanum, which is probably a lot easier to get. But I just need you to see just how literally incredible that plant is. Thank you very much. It is perfection. And I think I might have to steal it. Maybe I could just grow two in here. I don't know, I don't know. I might have to steal this one. Don't be surprised if you never see it again. Let's put him down here because he's absolutely massive. Right, next one. Oh, okay. So this next one, I have a very pathetic specimen. Hear me out. I've cut them recently, essentially. I've only got little babies grown back. So he's a little bit small, but he should prove my point. I'm sure I could put a photograph in of a bigger one. But the next plant on my list that I recommend to beginners is undoubtedly Philodendron Gigantium variegata. Yes, this is tiny. This is what is known professionally, scientifically in the trade as a tiny boy. And you get these basically, these really cool leaves. I'll try and show you without my camera just generally hating me. It's a little bit like a Marble Queen Pothos type vibe across the leaf. Imagine this much bigger. Um, and much better. Again, I will show you an image of a good one. I do actually have a massive one, like massive, like as tall as me downstairs. Obviously I could not bring that uh, to film with, but it would have been hilarious if I could. They're really, really good plants. Now then, these can grow a little bit gangly. So if you hate gangly plants, maybe don't go for it. In terms of general care, absolutely easy. Really, really easy. They can really tolerate underwatering. They're not that caring about humidity really they're just they're just tough little plants they hold their value they're quite a bit of money at the minute they're not super cheap they're not super expensive but they're it really depends um a lot of people are selling plants with more variegation on for more money i don't know whether i agree or disagree with that to be honest i don't know i don't really have an opinion on that at the minute but this is it this is this is tiny okay you're gonna find ones much bigger than this you, you're not gonna find them this small you're gonna find them bigger than this but i do recommend them because they're quite easy and they're quite nice to have as like a bigger plant because because as the name would suggest, these guys get mahusive, okay? So if you want some really big, this is quite a nice one. They size up quite well. The only negative, and I will go back to the gangly thing really quickly for a second. So I find generally the ratio of petiole to leaf on a lot of these plants generally is not amazing. So you get a longer petiole and a slightly smaller leaf. It's not quite as good as say what Gloriosums can get or McDowell's can get where they just get made like really big. It's not like that. But just to be aware, they can grow a little bit crap 
if you're not about that life, maybe don't go for it. It is a climber. I think it takes a little while to climb personally. It's not the quickest in the world. So you should get away without climbing it for a good while. But in terms of having something cool and funky and different that can get big, this is a great one for beginners. The next plant on my list, I've raved about a million times on my channel. This is absolutely no secret at all, but I really recommend this plant for beginners because I think it's very entertaining and very beautiful. And it's a way of getting some white into your collection on a budget. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It propagates reasonably well. It's pretty humidity tolerant. Any problems that you may have with it, you can fix. Let me tell you what I mean. This is a very ugly looking philodendron Florida ghost. I will insert a picture of what a sexy one looks like because this ain't sexy. It's been on the very top of my shelves and I, I may have, I may have forgotten about it a little bit, but this is what it's like. So if you don't know, I'm not going to waste too much time because if you watch my channel all the time, then I'm going to sound like a broken record. But basically Florida ghost, you have leaves that are essentially this shape. They emerge a very creamy white color and over time they will fade down to green. So this one is halfway through its fade it started out white and now it's fading down to green so it's not permanent but it is quite nice and honestly you needn't really look at that you can just look at the one beside me because it's much nicer but they're really great plants and they're very easy they grow quite quickly they respond really well to additional heat as well as additional light now what i meant before by fixing problems you may have a lot of people may feel disheartened buying one of these because they will hear about their friends or someone else on the internet buying them in and they started off with white emerging leaves and then they turned, you know, like a minty or a, or a light green over time. I have a fix for that. I have a whole video on that and on why that is. If you want to see that, I will link that down below for you. So don't let that put you off getting one of these. You can keep that beautiful white color coming in. No problem. It's really not that difficult. Yeah, th this is, <laughs> this is just really gangly. It's essentially a mother plant. Totally recommend them. Reasonably affordable, to be quite honest. I know I'm not talking about price, but they are reasonably affordable. And I really think they'll hold your attention. I really do. They're a great one for beginners. Okay, the next plant I have to show you is, it's not full maturity, this one, so it can look a bit sexier than what it does. Again, I'll probably insert a picture of what a fully mature leaf looks like from one of these plants because this doesn't quite do justice. The next plant I have to recommend to you for an easy care philodendron that's just a little bit different, a little bit sexy, is the philodendron jerry horn or the philodendron Ecuadorian canoe. Now, this one's in pond, so I should be able to tip it. This is kind of what it's about right here. Now, I've featured this plant quite a lot. I've featured it in philodendron spirit of sancti dupe videos. I've featured it in hauls. I've featured it in, in many, many a thing. I really, really love these. They ship well. They root quite well. They're just an all round easy plant. They do climb. So that's really cool if you want to stick them up a pole. But the, the cool thing really is just this leaf shape. Now, obviously it varies a little bit due to conditions. For example, this was grown in quite a lot of shade over winter and it's a bit fat and it's a bit just not defined, shall we say. You know, this one here has grown a little bit lighter and the shape is coming back and it's getting a bit bigger. Now, this is nothing. Let me tell you, this is nothing. And hopefully the image I've shown you to the side of me really tells you how big it actually is because this is not a big leaf at all. These leaves can quite easily go well above a foot long. No problem at all. And they do get these really cool ears and these really cool whiskers on them as well. So for that reason, because they're also easy care, of course, and they're very propable, you can propagate from them very well. I wanted to mention them again to mix it up. Philodendron, Jerry Horn or Philodendron Ecuadorian Canoe. I usually call them Jerry Horn and I, I do think it differs. I think a lot of people call them Jerry Horn. A lot of people call them Ecuadorian Canoe. There might be a third name for these and I, I don't know what that is. If you know, if, if I'm actually saying anything that makes sense, let me know in the comments and tell me the other name for them. But they're just really cool and really unique. They're very, very nice plants. Now I can't remember the hybrid that these are. It could be, it could be, don't quote me, don't quote me, because I haven't looked this up recently. I think it is a hybrid plant between philodendron pedatum and philodendron bipenifolium. I could have it wrong, I could have it wrong, but that is what I believe it to be a hybrid of, and it's so sexy. But as I say, this is just tiny. This is a prop, obviously a prop that I, I cut and I've rooted it and it's growing. So that needs to get a little bit bigger before it can be sold. Maybe another leaf or two, we'll see. But it's, it's hot, right? It's, it's hot. 
and I do recommend it because I think they're awesome and of course they're easy to look after. The next plant I recommend wholeheartedly for beginners is this one. This is small but do not underestimate it. There's something very cool about this plant. This plant here is probably going to drip all over me. This is the Philodendron Jose Bono. It is really quite something because much like the Philodendron Florida Ghost, leaves can emerge if I don't know if you can see them here, with a really minty white kind of appearance. I actually have two emerging because it looks like the plant has got two growing points. So those white bits in the middle, those are new leaves. What will happen over time is they will turn into this kind of color. So they will keep the variegation, right? They will, but it won't stay super, super cream. It does tend to drop to a mint color. So you don't really get to keep the amazing vibrancy. That's just weed all over my leg. Yeah, so this is really small. I'm going to insert a picture of what they look like when they mature because they look heavenly, to be quite honest. I saw a picture, I think, on Instagram of one of these, like maybe about a week ago. And don't get me wrong, I knew how big they could get, but there was something about this image just made me react tenfold. And I went and I took one of my plants that I have downstairs. It was kind of too big to sell, but too small to be a mother. And I mounted it straight onto a pole and now I'm growing a Jose Bono up a pole. So it really inspired me because honestly, they look great. They get these huge, big paddly leaves and it's just the best thing you've ever seen. I am literally, I don't know if you can see, water is just running off me right now. This plant is incredibly easy to look after. It genuinely, genuinely is. Not only that, but you get this cool variegation thing going on. I don't know why these leaves are curling. They're just a bit random right there. Just a really, really sweet plant and you get really huge leaves for a good price, I would say. These have gone up and down in value. I don't actually know how much they are as of recording this video right now, but they're very, very sought after and honestly, I get it. I totally get it, they're amazing. They size up pretty well. They're not too difficult to size up, so I like them for that as well. They are very nice propagators. They root really well. Obviously, this one has. This one's been a head cutting that's just been rooted and obviously, it's, it's grown a little bit extra, which is great. So for that reason, I recommend these because again they entertain you it's variegation but it kind of sticks around you don't really have to worry about reversion and stuff like that it's a beautiful beautiful plant and i would love to know your opinion on it because this is genuinely one of my favorite plants i love this plant so much okay so this is the last plant in the best category before i move on to what i think are some of the worst and i'll get on to that in a minute but i'll just grab the last best one that i have to show you this one i have a weird relationship with i'm not gonna lie this is the philodendron pareso version Day. It is good for beginners because it roots like nothing else. It borderline roots like a monstera half the time. I don't know if you can see these aerials, but they're so thick and meaty. It's insane. And you have to understand the stem on this plant isn't super thick, but it's giving me roots literally like monstera aerial roots. It's very, very tough in that sense. Now, I've spoken about these in the past and I actually can't remember how good they were at shipping. I know I made a comment on how they shipped. I haven't really shipped many of these out yet. Um, I can't remember what I said about them. I believe they are temperamental shipping, especially if it's cold. But other than that, they should do okay. So one of the cool things about this plant, and I guess one pitfall, because I should tell you about that. So the cool thing about this plant is that you get, let's figure out which way to tip it. You get this really cool mottling kind of effect on the plant. It's a little bit like a Jose Bono, other than this won't go as bright. It stays mint when it emerges. So you get this really kind of wicked effect down the leaves. Let's see if I can get a different one for you. There's one there as well. There is one that I can't necessarily pull down. There's one there as well. So you get this really, really cool pattern. This is actually growing super compact, but it, it does bring me onto my next point. This looks super compact. Honestly, these things, if anyone owns one, you will understand what I mean. These grow really gangly, really leggy. They're not the greatest for that, but they do grow well and they grow very, very quickly. Like really, they root quick and they grow quick. They're great for that. I just find them a bit gangly. So for me, I don't love them, but from a beginner's perspective of growing the plant and you know not killing it and taking care of it, these are great. Sorry, I'm gonna have to put this in a pot because it's literally just weighing on me all the time. Give me one moment. Right, there we go. So from a beginner's perspective, these are really, really good. Now, I will mention one thing. They can temporarily revert, right? They can do it when they're cut and they can do it with a change in light conditions. 
I need you to know it's not permanent, it comes back. So obviously this is as a result of essentially importing the plant, right? It's just had a little bit of a freak out and it's gone and it's gone green. It will come back. I've never not had one come back. Sometimes it takes a while. If they're in low light, it's going to take a little bit longer, but they do come back and they do turn into this beautiful, weird, I mean, what do you even call that? Mottled variegation, I guess, speckled, mottled, fizzy. I like that. Let's call it fizzy. That's a really good word. Fizzy variegation. So you get them looking like this. They're a little bit reminiscent of a philodendron bilitae, if you like that kind of thing, with the petiole and the long leaf, the arrow-shaped leaf. They're not quite as rigid as the bilitae though, and they, they can flop around a little bit because the leaf on a bilitae is very um, structural and strong. These are very, you can see them just kind of just just wiggling around doing their thing. So that doesn't bother you and you want something cool like this and you don't mind it being a little bit like all over the place. This is a really good one. I'm telling you it's good because it doesn't really die. It roots well, it grows quick. So for you, for a beginner plant, this is a very, very cute one. Ooh, now we're on to the worst. Okay, okay. Okay, so there's one plant I don't have to show you today, but I will tell you what that is when we get to it. I'm now going to go through the worst plants that I have picked for today anyway, that I think you should not go for as a beginner. Obviously, you do you. You do whatever you want. If you like the challenge, go for it. Just in my experience, it's probably not the best thing to do. I'm going to grab the first one. I'm going to talk about it. Okay, first plant, let's waste no time. This is the Philodendron Luxuriance. It is absolutely stunning, but it is, it's a total nightmare, to be honest. I had to think about that there. It's not a total nightmare, it's just a pain in the ass, okay? It really is. So I, I actually have my own version of this. I think I reported it on a video a while back. I still have that, I just haven't put it upstairs yet. It's in like a long planter. And that's because again, it is a crawler. They grow like this. This is a better example of a crawler than what I told you about the Gloriosum earlier. It will literally just crawl along the surface and then crawl off the pot. These plants are great. They are a beautiful heart-shaped. They are very velvety and they have veins, but then the vein isn't as prominent as a Gloriosum, for example. It's it's a bit more, do I want to say muted? I don't really know. They're, they're nice, right? They're nice. I put them on one of my worst for a couple of reasons, okay? One. These plants do not ship well. Let me just tell you right now, they don't. They never have for me. I don't know anyone else that thinks they're good at shipping either. So they're not very good shippers for starters. So you're gonna have some issues there. Whether you're buying them in for a shop or you are buying them in for yourself, you may have some issues there. I'll tell you straight off. Second of all, the care for this plant is not really your typical philodendron care, in my opinion. They seem to like a lot more humidity and, oh my God, a lot more water. And I mean a lot more water than nearly any other philo that I have. I've nearly killed these on many an occasion. It's probably why this doesn't look great, which again, I will get onto. They're just so thirsty. They are thirstier than you've ever expected. So if you want to get one of these, if you just think, you know what, Kaylee, I don't care what you say. I don't care. I want one anyway. Put it in a self-watering pot because seriously, you may not keep on top of watering it. It is crazy how much this thing drinks. So I also mentioned that this plant, it's not the easiest care. I liken it to the care of an anthurium in many ways because I honestly feel like they can suffer from the same problems. You can get crispy tips on the bottom of your leaves very, 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 very easily with this plant. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's going to get them. I'm just kind of saying that they don't respond to neglect at all. They, they just throw fit. And then once they've done it, then your leaf isn't all perfect. And then it's just annoying, right? They're a bit of a challenge in that sense. If you want one, go for it. As with any plant on this list, but I do not recommend. Not only that, but the price of them, I actually don't know what the price is at the minute. I know back in the day, they were a lot. They were a lot. They were like 150 to 200, and that was back then. I don't know what they are now. I'm pretty sure they haven't come down, probably because they are hard to ship. They're probably not the easiest to propagate. I haven't tried. They're just not the best plant. So if you want one, great. I just really don't recommend it. I just think you're gonna have a headache. I really do. A little bit of a pain in the ass. I have a lot of thoughts on this plant, and I don't know how true a lot of my thoughts and opinions are on this plant, but I'm just, I'm just going to get into it. So the next plant I have here used to look a lot different. This plant has grown insane amounts. It's a little bit tatty because it got neglected because it's become very low value and it just, it gets moved to a spot where it doesn't get the best conditions because I prioritize other plants, right? So it doesn't look the best, but it looked completely different 
until I cut it. And that is why I am not recommending this plant at all. This plant here is Philodendron Thai Sunrise. And I know you're gonna say, no, it isn't. It looks totally different. You're right, it looks totally different. But I'm telling you, this is Philodendron Thai Sunrise. You can probably see a little bit on the bottom here where it's kind of gone green and then kind of not a little bit, I guess. Now then, these plants would look very different from this. They are the same shape leaves. They have usually a really dark board around them and I think the inside is variegated and it, it does persist, it stays that way, hence we have all of this. I had one mother, one mother and I cut it down like a year ago and I still have some of the pops and I've mentioned this in a video like way back when, last year. So if you watch a lot of my content then you'll know. I had one of these, I cut it, and this is one of the cuttings that's grown out quite a lot from that tiny little baby that I probably showed a lot of you guys on video. It's just reverted. Like it doesn't, it doesn't get the green back. Like look at all these leaves, they're all, they're all light. And I've tried different lighting conditions. It's not affecting it. I cannot seem to get the original Thai sunrise vibe back. If you know how to get it back, please let me know because I don't understand what's wrong. But this is genuinely a philodendron Thai sunrise. So obviously I'm not gonna recommend it because the second you cut it and it's happened more than once, you get this, they just don't come back properly. So I'm not gonna linger on it too long because honestly, that's my only con of this plant. I'm not sure how easy they are to get or how expensive they are. I just know that from a propagation perspective, not very good at all, do not recommend. Right, next plant. Oh, I mentioned this plant in either last week's video or the week before that, depending on what order different videos come out. But I mentioned this plant and I gave you a, a bit of a tour of the mother plant that this was not directly taken from, but one of the mother plants anyway. I'm not gonna show you the, the juvenile cutting, so when I show you this plant, I need you to know that the leaf shape can change a lot. It's quite triangular. But I'm gonna show you this plant anyway. It is quite small, but this is Philodendron domesticum very Garter. And let me just very quickly get a pot to put this in because it's just easier. Oh, it's grown well on the propagation front though. Okay, so this plant, I do not recommend. Now, it's got nothing to do with its appearance. Look at it, it's gorgeous. That's a really nice specimen. And I think it's gonna have to be another mother plant because when I bought these in and these were not cheap and they're still not cheap, I think most of them died on me. They were really temperamental. So I know that they're temperamental shipping. Now, these plants, I've mentioned this before on this channel, these plants particularly, if you don't give them everything just so, they won't grow at all, right? Some plants get really leggy when you don't give them everything, but they still grow. This is one of the plants that just don't grow. They don't really do a whole lot at all. They turn very slow. So they're either super fast or they don't really do anything. So for that reason, I'm not recommending these. I'm also not re recommending these, to be honest, on price. I don't know if I can tip this up very well. There you go. That's a really, really nice shot. I just think they're super expensive. And it's not that there, there aren't super expensive plants that aren't good for beginners. It's just more, how likely is it to die on you when you get it? Do you know what I mean? They're not for beginners, in my opinion, they're really not. I don't believe it's just me being unlucky though. I do think they can be really just kind of shit when it comes to taking care of them. This propagation has survived really well, but let me tell you, they do not propagate well. They're a bit of a nightmare. They can fail too. They rot really easily as well. It's just not a good plan. Honestly, it's not a good plan. Now, are they beautiful? Absolutely, absolutely. I do have a picture somewhere of a mature one. I'll stick that in so you can see. I think there are a lot of work and I think there's a lot of risk there. So for that reason, I'm not recommending these at all, at all, at all. I mean, if you like the pain, obviously go for it, but I wouldn't. Oh, this next plant, oh my God, this next plant. Honestly, I have a hate-hate relationship with this plant. I really do. This next plant, I'm not about to show you a good specimen at all. And I guess that kind of proves my point a little bit. This next plant is from a cutting of a mother and it's just growing crap. Now there are several things wrong with these plants and the reason I don't recommend them for beginners. This here, unfortunately, is covered by many. This is a very small, very pathetic philodendron pink princess. Now you can see a little bit of pink on this leaf here. And is it this, no, this leaf here. Sorry, I'm doing it backwards in my camera. They just, oh God, where to start? Honestly, where to start with these? Okay, I'll try and articulate what I mean. So for starters, they grow really quite crap. They will grow a lot like this. Obviously ignore the stem there. They just grow a little bit leggy and just a bit crap. You need to give them more light than what a typical fellow would need. In my opinion, you need to give them more. So if you can do that, cool. Disregard everything I've just said. 
cross that off your list. Second, I mean, they are a bit expensive. In some countries, but such as US, they're really expensive. So that could be a reason against it for you as well. But you don't have to listen to that either. The thing that I can't stand about them, to be honest, is a lot of the time when you cut them, they do actually revert. And it's really difficult to maintain the pink variegation. And I, it's just, it's weird. It's weird. Because if you have, you know, say the top of your plant goes all pink, which mine has before, you're stuck. That won't grow. That'll keep growing and dying off. I've tried that and I've tested it and that is something I found to be true. But also if you cut them just to propagate, they are highly likely to revert on you, but it's not permanent. And this is where the problems come in because you cut them, they look like they're reverted. You're like, oh, well, it's reverted. So you think about throwing it away and you shouldn't because it may come back, but it could take ages to come back. It could take months to come back. So now you have 10 million of these things in your house and none of them look how you wanted it, you know, because obviously people buy pink princesses to look hot to look sexy, to have pink. So they're really, really hard to get pink. And that is another reason why when we buy pink princesses on the market, the amount of pink is very low because probably these things aren't doing so well when they're cut. And obviously growers are quite rightly propagating them, but they're gonna start off like this and you're not gonna get much. Like it's not even no dependent half the time. It's not the same as a Monstera Albo. These things are just really odd the way that they work. And they can be a bit of a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. If you've got the patience of a saint, go for it. If it's your favorite plant, go for it. I'm, I'm not saying definitely don't. Just in my opinion, these just aren't good for beginners. As I say, this one's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, it, it's weird. You cut them, the variegation goes. You can grow it and it'll be random until it gets to a point where there's too much in the stem and then it won't ever disappear. And it's stuck in the, in the stem in the nodes. You want to explain that? Because I take care of a lot of plants and I don't get that. I really don't get that. Nothing else seems to work that way. So for me, it ain't good. Again, I'm showing you a shit one. You can get better ones. You would be probably purchasing much bigger ones than this if you want one. Just do your research, I guess. Gather other people's opinions on, on looking after them, I think, if you really want one. But for me, they're just an absolute nightmare. They really are a nightmare. I don't like them. Ah, that's my living wall. I imagine you can hear that because I feel like I'm having to shout over that. That is my living wall. I don't even know how long it comes on for anymore. Right, the last plant on my list I'm gonna wait for because that seems really noisy, to be honest. That seems like I'm not gonna be able to talk over that. Okay, living wall has stopped. So the last plant on my list I actually do not have to show you and that's probably representative of my problem a little bit. These plants are gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I think they're absolutely incredible. I love them. They are one of my favorites, but they're just quite difficult to care for generally. Um, yeah. So the last plant I have on my list today that I do not recommend for beginners is the Philodendron varicosum. Now then, they are tough to a degree. They do not like changes in pH in the water. I, a recent experience can tell me that, uh, if you don't already know. I've had some problems with my living wall and they, they didn't really make it. They kind of got burnt or however you'd call it. So they don't take um, changes in pH in the water very well. They don't particularly take low humidity very well. They don't grow very well unless they climb. And this is a big one. A lot of plants can still size up if they haven't got something to climb onto. For example, Philodendron glorious. That will just size up. It can really do quite well. And that's probably due to the, the genes of obviously the Melanochrysum and the Gloriosum in there. But these particular plants just do not grow well unless up a pole. And they don't like to root into poles very easily, I find, compared to a lot of other philodendrons. So they're a bit of a nightmare. That's not the number one reason I don't recommend them, though. The number one reason I don't recommend them is because they're an absolute spider mite den. Like, honestly, the amount of times I have these things and I get spider mites on them. And trust me, spider mites are a really, really low probability in this shop because we're rocking 80% humidity most of the time. Plants get sprayed with water. Plants get sprayed with, you know, pesticides, all of that stuff. And the rest of my plants are fine. It is rare that I see an issue with spider mites in this place. It's not really a pest that I have to deal with. However, when it comes to philodendron varicosum, they are prolific. They are ridiculous. They're always quarantined. They're out of the way of anything else. So we don't cause any problems. They're just horrendous. I have maybe 50 or 60 varicosum. I'm not actually sure how many I have. I haven't really checked, but I know that most of them are looking absolutely crap. And honestly, it's a spider mite thing. For some reason, 
or with any other velvety plant. They just love varicosum. Now, they do love things like gloriosum as well. That's quite a tasty plant for a spider mite, but varicosum, honestly, absolute nightmare. Now, if you can take care of these, they are totally worth it. And let me tell you, if you've decided that you want a philodendron varicosum, there are a ton of different forms. And I mean a ton of different forms. There is like over 10 forms quite easily. I prefer the original. Um, I call it the classic, but the regular form varicosum, that's by far my favorite. I have one of those at my flat, but again, it ain't doing too well because it doesn't really climb and it gets spider mites. So if you want to try that plant, just be very careful. If you already have problems with spider mites in your home and that is something that you frequently find that you're struggling with, I don't think you should get one. If your environment rarely gets that kind of thing and you're on top of it or whatever have you, maybe you could, but you still need to keep an eagle eye out. Don't assume because there's nothing on anything else and you don't get them that you won't get them on this plant because honestly, I can't keep them away from the plant and it's really starting to irritate me quite a lot and I'm losing a lot of varicosum to spider mites right now. It's not good. It's not good at all. That was the last plant on my list and definitely the last worst plant that I recommend to beginners. As I say, this wasn't necessarily the shortest video, but imagine what it would be like if I actually did all of the stats and everything else. It would take four Ever. It would be ridiculous. So with that in mind, I've, again, I've tried to keep it more fluid. I've tried to just give you my opinions and my experience on each individual plant without rating them. Everything in the best section, there aren't necessarily some plants better than another. They're just kind of general. And again, in the worst section, there aren't necessarily any worse than others. It really, I guess you could say price would be the last factor in which would be better or worse kind of thing. So please take it with a grain of salt. Please understand that my conditions are different from yours. And you may just have a different experience to me, I guess. That is it for this video, guys. If you'd like to see me do a good beginner plant on a different type of genus, i.e. a Monstera one would be good, an Anthurium one would be really good. I would love to do that one. Anything like that, please let me know down below. I'm going to be really honest, whether you comment it or not, I'm probably going to do it. And I might start with Anthurium. I might start with Anthurium because I'm kind of excited about it. I will also possibly do more philodendron ones in the future because obviously there are so many philodendron out there. These are just a couple of them. Honestly, this is nothing. So I would love to do another one of these in the future. Uh, let me know what you would like to see down below and I will get on that for you. That's it for this video, guys. I'm going to go step outside because I'm way too hot and I will see you in the next one. Bye.